on tonight's episode of Exploring Idaho with an X. We take a look at the western and eastern Snake River Plain. TNT I'm dynamite TNT And I will not fight TNT I'm a power load TNT Watch me explode The Snake River Plain is a geological feature located primarily within the state of Idaho. It stretches about 400 miles westward of the northwest of the state of Wyoming to the Idaho-Oregon border. Snake River Plain is a very distinct physiographical feature of North America. The western and eastern Snake River Plains are topographically continuous and seem similar, however, they are structurally quite different. The Snake River Plain is a recent chapter of Idaho's geological story started about 16 million years ago, just after the major pulse of Columbia River basalt volcanism. The beginning of the Snake River Plains actually started in the Wahi Plateau, where Idaho, Oregon, and Nevada meet. Massive volcanism commenced in the Wahi Plateau, creating a major hot spot. Due to the migration of the continent, known as, North, as the North American Plate, moved over this stationary hot spot which still exists today in Yellowstone National Park. During the continent's movement over the hot spot, an adjacent zone developed at the Earth's crust was pulled apart forming a large topographic depression. This became the Western Snake River Plain, and for a long time this plain held a giant Pliocene lake which geologists have named Lake Idaho. The Western Snake Plain volcanism began with extrusion of rhyolitic lavas from fissures that paralleled the range, front faults coveal with extension and graven formation, followed by the eruption of the ash flow tufts. Volcanism was followed within a few million years. Volcanic activity in the western Snake River Plain began with the eruption of silicic volcanic rocks along the northern and southern margins of the basin between 11 and 9 million years ago. Major basaltic activity in the western Snake River Plain occurred in two time periods, nine, between 9 and 7 million years ago and a 2 million years ago. The earlier episode is represented by basalt flows and ferrotomagmatic vents which are intercalculated with the late Miocene sediments. The western Snake River Plain is a large tectonic graben or rift valley filled with several kilometers of lacustrine or lake sediments. The Western Snake River Plain is 30 to 43 miles wide and trends northwest. It is a fault-bounded basin with both the large land surface and the rock layers dipping toward the axis of the plain. The basin is filled with interbedded volcanic rocks and late bed sediments of tertiary and quaternary age. The Eastern Snake River Plain trend is thought to mark the track of the Yellowstone Plume from its mid-Miocene location beneath the Oahe Plateau to its current place in Yellowstone. Some geologists believe that the eastern Snake River Plain volcanism began with the eruption of airily extensive ash flow tufts from large caldera complexes, which were later filled in to varying degrees with rhyolite lavas and basaltic lavas from shield volcanoes. The Itabata silicic volcanoes of the eastern Snake River Plain are lithologically similar to those of the western Snake River Plain but are younger in age. The eastern Snake River Plain was formed by the weight of surrounding volcanic rock, and this weight caused a depression. The eastern plain is formed of mostly silicic and basaltic volcanism rocks, and contains a small amount of sediments. The eastern Snake River Plain is characterized by one to two kilometers of basalt that overlies rhyolite and welded tuff. Scientific drill holes at the Idaho National Laboratory site show that the basalt ranges from 100 meters to over 1,500 meters thick. There are currently five major rhyolite domes that are still present on the eastern Snake River Plain. They are called the Big Southern Butte, Cedar Butte, Middle Butte, Unnamed Dome, and the East Butte. The volcanic style of basaltic rocks in the eastern Snake River Plain is gradational between Hawaiian volcanism and flood basalt volcanism. Most basalt flows in the Snake River Plains are called Pajeo basalts that were emplaced as compound flows. 
Compound flows are a sequence of thin individual cooling units ranging from less than 3 feet to 30 feet thick. After two very massive caldera eruptions that resulted from the Yellowstone hotspot helped form topographic depressions during the Miocene age, resulting in Lake Idaho, which covered a large portion of the Snake River Plain, between what is now Twin Falls and Hell's Canyon. From 7,000 to 25,000 years ago, alpine glaciation was widespread in the higher elevations of the state of Idaho. There have been at least two periods of major glaciation that are evident in Idaho. The last glaciation occurred about 4,000 years ago. Once climates changed, large quantities of glacial melting had a dramatic effect on the landscape. During and immediately following the Ice Age, the streams of Idaho carried much more water than they do today. One of the largest of these lakes was ancient Lake Bonneville, once covering 20,000 square miles with a maximum depth of no more than 1,000 feet. The Great Salt Lake is a remnant of this lake today. Lake Bonneville rose until the water broke through Red Rock Pass in southeastern Idaho. This was one of the first in a series of catastrophic flooding events in Northwest known as the Ice Age Floods. The flood waters of Lake Bonneville was approximately 20 times the flow of the Columbia River, or to otherwise put it, the lake flowed at 5,300,000 cubic feet per second, which swept down the Snake River, leaving debris and sediment deposits across southern Idaho. For miles on either side of the snake, floodwaters stripped away soils and scoured the underlying basalt bedrock, in the process creating what we know today as Shoshone Falls, Twin Falls, Crane Falls, and Swan Falls, all the while cutting and deepening gorges and canyons along the way. Today, most the Snake River Basin consists of wide arid plains and rolling hills, bordered by high mountains. At 1,078 miles long, the Snake River is the largest tributary of the Columbia River, the largest North American river that empties into the Pacific Ocean. The powerful flow and steep gradient of the Snake River has been utilized since the early 20th century to generate hydroelectricity, enhance navigation, and provide irrigation water from 15 major dams. Aside from water from the river, water is also pulled from the Snake River Aquifer. The Snake River and its aquifer in many ways controls the economy of Idaho. With roughly 3 million acres of farmland on the Snake River Plain are irrigated, which about one third of this from wells and the rest from canals. Idaho has one of the highest per capita water consumptions in the United States. The plain has a high level of agricultural development and houses the majority of Idaho's population. The Snake River Plain also contains a potential source of renewable energy in the form of geothermal heat. This is due to the basaltic plain that resulted still remains a large amount of surface level heat flow. Most of the geothermal usage is in the Warm Springs area, hence the name. The geothermal heat allows Idaho to be one of the five states in the United States that currently has functional geothermal electricity functioning. The Snake River also offers plenty of fishing, boating, and camping within its geographical features. So this concludes our program of Exploring Idaho. We thank you for watching and please join us next week as we take you outdoors to Redfish Lake.